All right, try that again. Hello, this is the second Regents materials discussion. And um, the general plan I was thinking tonight was we were going to start with armor materials and then do some fighting garb and then move on to court garb. Um, I've got the video recorder running. Looks like looks like it's going. Uh, hopefully we don't have any echo on anyone. So with that, I will open the floor. Um, does anyone want to get us started on armor materials? If we don't have any armor materials, we can go straight into fighting garb instead. If someone wants to start us off there. I should be you should be able to hear me on the other uh, on this old record is the one that should be speaking. Is that not coming through? I can hear you just fine. Okay. I don't say we're all super talkative tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll start off by saying um, I like to make fighting tunics out of linen. I find it falls nicer, drapes nicer, breathes really well. Um, however, it is a pain in the butt to applique. So if I'm planning on doing an applique, I'll usually use cotton or even a cotton poly mix for cheapness. Do you have a recommended source for that or? Uh, yeah, I really like fabricsstore.com. It's fabrics-store.com. Um, they've got the best price for linen that I've ever found and it's good quality. I usually like to use their mid-weight, which is uh, 5.3 ounces per yard. Okay. Um, for myself, it's been a while since I've done standard fighting guard, but I found a uh, really nice heavyweight cotton that I've used for a few things. Um, it's just Joanne's. Um, it was supposed to be fighting guard, but I put too much trim on it, so it ended up being court garb. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Um, yeah, for um, when I want to do like applique, like I said, I like to go with cotton or even a cotton poly blend. And yeah, usually I will just go to Beverly's or Joann's and, you know, they've got a huge selection of so it's never a problem that way. Uh, is this... Kaya, you do a lot of um cotton poly or cotton stuff where do you get yours huh, i thought she was here maybe not that's her icon yeah uh, so i haven't done a lot of carving i'm definitely not at the level of Kaya, but I was really actually yeah. kind of glad to hear you say that applique on linen is difficult because the last tunic I made, I don't fight, so I don't know if it's fighting. It's definitely not court garb. It was on linen, um, but I kind of stepped it up a little bit and I did some letters and then I did um, something that had a lot of corners. I, it was actually, it was the Odenmater, um skirt order and it was on linen with linen and the linen of the applique fabric frayed a lot and it was really difficult to do the satin stitch over 
Um, the first tunics that I did, I used uh, Kona, um, but my applique skills were remedial at best. I'm not sure how much they've improved, but um, I'll have to go back and maybe try something on not linen. Yeah, I've also found that um, ironing on an interface helps with the fraying. Um, mm. and more recently, I've liked to use uh, stitch and tear on the back as well, just to give it a little more oomph as I'm stitching it. And that helps smooth it out a lot. I know I got all the way through this tunic and then I forgot to do that on the back of the border along the skirt. And now I was looking at going back and going over that all again. Um, well, I'm just going to say I haven't done it yet. It was a little overwhelming by the time I got done with all of that. But it helps a lot. I, I could see the difference between when I used that and when I didn't. Yeah, I, I definitely have had times where I've gotten most way through, realized I made a mistake, and I'm just like, nah, it's done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not going to go back over it. Um, another trick I've used when I'm doing linen is if it's a straight line, I'll put trim over the uh, border, and that gives you a wider space so you can avoid fraying that way. Um, I really like to use cotton thread. Uh, it's, it's the thicker stuff. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is right now. Anyways, I use it and I like to make trim with a little inkle weaver. Uh, you said you go to fabricstore.com? Yes. It's F-A-B-R-I-C-S dash s t o r e dot com okay that's where i've well, got i'm going to explain why the first two said they were for sale and didn't load i've never oh, there we go yeah i've never used any of their blends but i really love their mid-weight linen Uh, Kaya, I saw your thing you logged out and then came back in. Are you with us this time? Hmm. You're unmuted, but we still don't hear you. Um, so maybe some microphone problems there. Um, Shoot. There we got something. Hmm. I'm looking right now, and fabricstore.com doesn't have a huge selection of colors. Um, usually I'll go and there's, you know, probably 30 or more different colors in the weight I want. Right now it looks like they're at about 10. Sorry, are you guys able to hear me now? Yay, yes. Hello. Oh, finally. <laughs> Sorry, I was having issues with my computer. And that's my cat. Um, Sorry, fabricstore.com. I love that place. Yeah, I was also saying that you um, have done a lot of cotton. And I wasn't sure if you had a special place you got it from. Um, I buy Kona cotton. I used to buy it by the bolts from Beverly Fabrics, but since they primarily close, I go either online and buy it by the bolt through Joann's, or I just pop into Joann's and grab it. But I, I almost exclusively use these. I uh, use Kona cotton if I'm using cotton for like tunics. Yeah, for stores, we, we have a Joann's around here, but uh, we also used to have just a few miles down the road. On at uh, uh, was a fabric discount store, big store, and now the, the building's entirely gone. Um, I've been told that they moved a few blocks up the street, but um, haven't found the new one yet. 
It used to be at San Pablo and Ashby. I hope that buying fabric doesn't go to exclusively online because one of the things that I really enjoy is going in and, and I mean, obviously all of the colors and that, but like touching it and feeling the texture as well as like the pattern and seeing if the pattern or the texture fits with what I want. And I can't do that if they're all online. The Joanne store near me is closing. I heard that they're going to move their location and I'm really hoping they don't close entirely because fabric is such a touching textile thing for me. Um, I've used the fabric store.com for linen because I can order a lot of it, but I still, I still like to go in and just kind of, it's like a library. I just kind of go in and hang out and with all the fabrics. Uh, well, Joanne's just went public um, and their stock's doing decently, but I doubt that they're going to close down because if you think about it, how many cosplayers, last minute crafters need things like right now? You know, they need that last bit of a project. They need that last yard of fabric. Can't relate to that at all. <laughs> um, I also oh, noticed yeah. that for anything a quilter would use, mm -hmm. you're pretty good to go to an uh, in-person store. Um, likewise, anything a school mom might use for costume making. Yeah. But... I found that people who like reenactors and cosplayers tend to know their materials pretty well and want to know exactly what they're ordering and have it be, you know, all written out for them, which is hard to get at an in-person store. Yeah, and occasionally just for regular fabric for clothes and some costumes, I'll go onto mod cloth online and pick up something there. So, but it's good to know weaves and your material, um, what's in your cloth and what type of cloth it is and using industry standards. So actually along those lines, let me grab something here. For knowing what's in your materials and stuff, I found this book years ago, More Fabric Savvy. And I, it's out of print now, but it is amazing for just having, here's, here's what's in it. Here's your thread. Here's what needles you should use. Here's what foot you should use. Um, what type of tension and everything. And it's just a great resource. Yeah, that does sound pretty neat. You should yeah, put sounds good. that writing so that I can look at it later. <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, what about for uh, accessories and such to go with the garb? Uh, sashes, spell balls, stuff like that. Do you anyone have preferences? Personally, I use scraps from other projects for the smaller stuff. Agreed. Unless it's like for a Paragon sash or something. I usually don't buy fabric for that specifically. Okay. Oh, it looks like there's a new edition of your book out. Oh, great. Yeah, so I've got a link to that here because I'm going to go buy a copy. So at the end of my reign, I found, I don't remember where, Amazon, I think it was. I ordered um, silver trim, you know, the like the corded uh, border, bias tape. It's bias tape with a little cord in it. Uh, two rolls of it. If anybody needs to make a Paragon sash, I have a whole lot left over like a whole lot of silver border for a paragon sash so anybody needs any let me know thank you thank you
All right, so I just posted a link to the book I mentioned in the uh, event discussion. Um, any special thoughts for Monster Garb as a va variant of Fighting Garb? Um, you know, I've used everything from silk to fur to burlap um satin all of it it's really dependent upon what aesthetic i'm looking for yeah um, I mean, my oh, go, ahead. go ahead sorry I, I managed to find a metallic lame for a metal golem and yeah i stitched some light leather applique onto it works really well LeMay in general is so hard to work with. It's just so flimsy. So good job. Yeah. That is rough. Uh, I don't care what materials probably used for Monster's Garb as long as it A, works, and don't rein yourself in. Like, go all out for Monster Garb. Just over the top. Use whatever you want. And don't cry if it gets hit by something. Because it will. <laughs> Right. Um, here, uh, we can really go two different directions. We can head more towards uh, the armor side or more towards the court garb side. Uh, what are people thinking? I, I say court garb. I'll agree with court garb. All right. Um, Lothus, go ahead and uh, start us off on court garb. All righty. Um, I typically like to do um, like brocade overdresses and such. Um, most of those I've picked up just in the scraps at Joann's or Beverly's over the years and kind of collected it. Um, you can get some really good deals if you look out. But again, this was years ago. I don't know how, how that's changed. Um, but for like underdresses and skirts and things that are going to be touching my skin, uh, I love to go with 100% silk, and that one I get from Dharma Trading Company. You are so bougie with your 100% silk, but it is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice because it's easy to dye, so you can have any color you want. Um, it works for veils. It works for dresses. It works for banners. You know, you can buy just a few yards and have it do almost anything, depending on the weight. Uh, personally, I love a variety of fabrics for court garb. I think that rather than focus on the materials you're buying for your garb, which, I mean, get whatever the heck you want, historical or non-historical accuracy, but the material that I splurge on the most is actually the pattern in which to make the garb with. I have a lot of reconstruction garb books of costumers books and things like that. So as long as you're spending money on good material for it, rather than like bottom weights, you want something that will last years if you're putting a lot of time and effort into it. So don't try to get anything like really plasticky looking unless you're going for that really shiny look. But definitely don't go for anything that's really delicate is what I would say. And silk's not delicate uh, very much. You, It can be put under a lot of strain, but it's not going to fall apart, which is good. Yeah, I, I have a piece of court guard that I made out of some very nice felt, but, or, or um, sorry, not felt, um, velvet. But it's just such a pain to deal with that I almost never wear it just because cleaning it up afterwards is a mess. I can just yeah, <laughs> if I cannot put it in the washing machine, I do not use it. <laughs> um, another thing, I mean, one I would say I would stay away from is satin. I know that's something that's kind of popular because it's shiny and pretty. But it frays like heck. It's not durable. 
you can do better with silk, <laughs> basically. And if you're having problems with silk and uh, satin, my recommendation is actually to get some iron on. Uh, what is it? Uh, the iron on stabilizer, because when I was making Ben's wizard's garb, the sleeves and part of the costume are all lined in satin. It looks really cool, has the effect I want, but there's a little bit of bunching because it was so stupidly slippery and I hated that thing so much near the end. But um, someone recommended, hey, you know, stabilizer would have been your friend here. So if you're buying materials for sat something satin, get yourself some iron on stabilizer as well and only use it on the wrong side. Right. Yeah. St stabilizer with so many things with applique with adding extra stitches for very stiff stiff points of the thing this has a actually a horsehair stabilizer inside of it when i made it oh, nice. don't stay on it <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing is that notions within your garb you might want to think about the materials that you're getting for that of whether or not you're using plastic or metal because like I've gotten costumes off the rack that have like plastic hooks and I always replace those with metal. So it's good to have those supplies on hand. Sure. Um, yeah. Just to, for example, to plug this, the silk versus like poly satin, the Dharma mm -hmm. company has 45 inch satin silk. 100% silk for 11 bucks a yard, which to me seems like a pretty great price. So, also here in California, we're kind of lucky because we have three different fabric districts that I can think of off the top of my head. We've got Oakland, San Francisco, and LA all have fabric districts. So, it's there is a lot of fashion fabric to be had within our state. Yeah, that's a good point. I've never been to one of those, but I've always kind oh. of wanted to. <laughs> We've got to go. I took Monica <laughs> to the one in um, Oakland, and then we hit Brytex over in San Francisco as well. I have a feeling I'd get overwhelmed quickly. <laughs> um, I definitely got overwhelmed in the LA one, because you're talking like over 100 shops in about a square mile. Oh, wow. And I was just trying to pick up some Renaissance Fair garb um, fabric. And it was, I was looking for a tropical white cotton and some white linen. And I mean, these people will cut great deals for full bolts of fabric with you. But then you're like left wondering, how am I going to explain? I bought a full bolt of fabric to my husband. While I'm carrying it down the street with my well, other forty, you've already got piles and piles of fabric at home, and yeah, I have twelve bins of fabric currently. Yeah, I stopped buying fabric except for like individual projects because I did. I had a whole room full of fabric that I still haven't used a lot of it, and I gave yeah. away ten boxes when we moved. So I feel yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm right now I'm making hoods out of the extra fabric, and I'm about twenty hoods in, and I've still I haven't even really cut the surface of those bins. That was just what was sitting in the craft room. It wasn't what was in the storage. Well, I'm gonna head off, but nice right. chatting with you guys. Actually, it's great chatting with you. Zeus, Bye. Um, Zeus, hmm? Did you have anything on? Uh, we haven't talked about the armor yet. Did you have anything on oh. eleven working in armor that you wanted to put in? Because yeah, I know you you make um, leather armor and such. So. Whatever questions people have. Um, do you have any recommended place to get it? Uh, um, um, I get my leather from Tandy. Um, which isn't that far of a drive for me. Um, 
And then for the metal armor, Home Depot's dirt cheap weldable steel. It's uh, high carbon steel, so it's not that far off from historical um, and easy to work with. Uh, my most heavily used anvil is a one foot chunk of railroad track that I got for free many years ago. Um, I've got a couple of actual anvils, but railroad track is just so handy. Um, other than that, um, I can't remember where I've gotten online. Some, uh, some places online will inexpensively cut, um, flat rolled steel. Um, so the suits of Lorica I made, um, I half cheated and had, uh, them cut the strips. I think it was McMaster's. McMaster's? No. That's no, not I don't remember. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I want to say they charge like 25, 50 cents a cut, so, you know, plan it out. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, metal uh, armor actually doesn't have to be expensive or tool intensive to get going. Um, an angle grinder will cut it and a uh, power drill to put your holes in it and roofing nails for rivets, roofing nails and washers. Um, a lightweight hammer. You don't need a big heavy hammer for forming metal. A lot of the rough shaping I just ended over my knee. Um, I think for the you know expensive tools, the fancy stuff, that's when you're doing what Oliver is doing with his knife making. Um, where right um, there, you need a high consistency throughout the steel, especially since he's uh, heat treating. But armor, you're not heat treating. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How uh, popular is Ringlord these days? Does anyone use them still? I still use them. I don't know about I anyone else. Okay. Yeah, I, well, I haven't made chain for a decade, so I don't. <laughs> right. That that's where I'm at. As it's been longer than that for me. <laughs> yeah, my current chain project is taking my what, 10-year-old halberk and slowly welding rings together. With wow. a, Yeah, that's slow. That's, uh, what, three a minute? <laughs> oh, man. So basically, when I wear it and rings pop out, that's what I replace. <laughs> okay, so, that's good. But... But now you're playing healer and you don't wear it. <laughs> Yeah, I should go back to something that wears armor. Better cardio. All right. Um, well, if we think of any other questions for you, we'll I'll text them to you or something. All righty. All righty. Well, I'll see you all later. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Bye David. Um, let's see here. Other Looping back to court guard, did we have more on that? Um, let's see here. Um, a Sorry. website that uh, Castings reminded me of is uh, Calentier Trim. They have a lot of pretty ribbon and trim that is sort of period looking. Yeah, trim can definitely. <laughs> Trim can trim can turn a fighting garb into a court garb. I did it. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, What's the? Uh, how do you spell it? C What's the website? Yeah, C A L O N T I R T R I M dot com. There's also someone here in Northern California that I tend to buy my trim from that's up in Eureka. I'm going to post that 
in the general chat. Which is nice because she'll like ship out the next day. And local's pretty cool too. Yeah. So, and I posted a link to Mood Fabrics, which is another place where I, it has a lot of drool worthy stuff and I get in trouble quickly. <laughs> I know I've picked up some interesting trim at just the Renaissance Fair. That was a lucky find. Um, oh, um, do you go to the um, the really tiny booth that's next to the pure working person? This uh, the Farthingtons? This was a tiny booth at a San Jose Ren Fair. I that only ran once. <laughs> yeah, I think if it's the lady I'm thinking of, she's at a lot of the California Renaissance Fairs, and her husband does the pewter... Um, pins she's actually local to um the alameda area they live okay. in alameda okay and i guess since nobody's mentioned it yet i would say that uh i don't have a great source for it but 100 percent wool's kind of nice for your heavy nighttime clothing um Again, I don't like it touching my skin. You always put silk under wool, but uh, they do tend to breathe better than something you might pick up that looks cool at, at Joann's. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, it's a little pricey, um, but I can usually get for about $20 a yard um, a midweight tropical wool. Do you have a website you like? Uh, no, because that's usually what I go to the fashion district for is that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which honestly, the, when you go to the fashion district, you can get exactly what you want, or you can take the time to go around and kind of just like get a feel for what speaks to you, but yeah. you're only, I mean, 10 stores in and you're ready to be done. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, you you mentioned patterns earlier. Does Joanne still do the like two dollar patterns a couple times a year? Yeah, and actually, sometimes I go down to a dollar even for the Vogue patterns, and I stock up on quite a few of them to give out. Because they're they've got a great cloak pattern from um, Simplicity. McCall's has stopped, I think, producing all of the patterns for historical reenactments. Like the you used to be able to get the like five bodices in one pattern, but they are mainly sticking to whatever is on TV shows these days. Yeah, that the garb that I mentioned earlier is supposed to be Boromir's outfit from Lord of the Rings, and it's supposed to be in corduroy. It's not. <laughs> and that's how I managed to change it. Yeah, came out pretty good. I can see it was corduroy, though. Um, yeah, and they still have, like, the night stuff. They came out with a very large line of um, Downton Abbey, Outlander, and Oh, goodness. What's that other TV show that's big and historical right now? Jeez. Vikings? No, actually, easily enough, interestingly enough, they didn't really do a lot of Viking stuff. They did a ton of Game of Thrones stuff. Um, they got a couple of costumes from The Great right now as well. That's a fun show. <laughs> yeah, it's it's excellent. The new season's hilarious. There, there is no historical accuracy left. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, I, I, they will probably pick up Bridgerton, too. Oh, yeah, that that was it. They've got Bridgerton, which the new season's premiering in March.
and it's out of the car. That's okay. Um, all right. Uh, unless anyone's got more on court garb, I guess we can switch over to more on the armor side. Um, although I can't really think of a lot to say on it. Uh, Zeus mentioned most of it. Tandy leather is where I get my leather as well. Um, I got some good steel when Orchard Supply went out of business. That is still sitting in a, a storage shed, but will eventually get used. Um, I suppose I'm sorry. Um, for the leather, if you wanted to do tooled leather armor, Tandy does give very good classes on how to do the tooling and cutting and working in the, with the leather. Um, we've got a store down in Union City, and I think there's a store up in Sacramento area, or that direction. There used to be, yeah. Oh. I mean, it might still be there. I just haven't lived there in the last 12 years. Okay. Yeah, the Union City stores. Uh, oh, and that's right. There's also uh, San Mateo uh, right across the bridge. The Union City one is a much larger store. It's got a much larger classroom area for teaching and such. I don't have a lot to offer. Does anyone have any questions or anything to? <laughs> yeah, if there's questions, then maybe one of us can answer it. I, I, it would be really nice if we had Bayless on here for this, but uh, he's not quite returned yet. So maybe we could make armor a separate. Meeting. Yeah, we, we we might make cover that again. Because it's and... it's metal and leather and. It's a, a much different skill set. I don't set. know what the word is. Yeah. Okay. I haven't done a whole lot, but I got to say, I really do like it when people manage to combine materials. You know, mm -hmm. feast garb with leather just kind of brings it up another notch. Um. um. Actually, straddling the line armor and fighting garb, light leather, um, flexible stuff um, that just counts as one point of armor. One point of armor is still really nice. Um, people, uh, your opponent may not realize that you have it, and they'll swing at you once and then run off, run off and you sit, call out armor, and you're still up. Um, and light armor like that you can pretty much do anything on its look that you would with fabric. Um, machine yeah. could have no problems with light armor like that, or with, with light leather, yeah. I've had this fantasy of making like a, uh, a kind of a duster ranger type coat out of light leather for years, but every time I go look, it's so darn expensive. <laughs> Yeah, for the when when I bought my machine, the criteria I ran it through uh, for, before I bought it was can it sew through multiple layers of heavy ar uh, leather? Um, that's why I wound up with an ex expensive machine. But yes, it does. <laughs> um, and... Antique machine that can th sew through three layers of light leather, but it oh, is. Yeah, the 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 old oh. machines can go through really Anything. thick stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have sewn through my hand with my machine before. Oh. Yeah, D don't slip with that stuff. Yeah, I did that once, but I do not have a high-powered machine, so it stopped in the middle. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ow, that just made me cringe. Okay, I'm cringing now. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. Are you okay? Are you doing okay? 
I love this. Did you make all the old uh, quilted tunics back in Wave uh, in Wavehaven? Uh, I was the one who sort of led that project. Uh, I think I sewed them all together, and then we had sort of a party, and everybody came and helped stud them because we ended. It was for all the guard members, so you know there was about eight tunics that went out all at once, and they were all uh, studded. Which is a lot of studs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I almost think that maybe somebody made something later on that looked the same but was a different project. Or that might have just been the tunics. Because I did a few different iterations of the same theme for various different reigns. And those were basically just two layers of fabric with batting in between? Just regular quilting or...? Um, they were something I bought at Beverly's. It was, yeah, kind of like a satin fabric on black on one side, blue on the other side with quilting or, uh, batting in between and pre-quilted. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was not too expensive and not too hard. <laughs> um, I, I know Alex still has one of them and it's not in the best of shape, but I haven't seen anybody else who still has those. Okay. Uh, Felix still, or Phoenix still has his. I've okay. Seen him wear it when he goes out. Yeah, I just I haven't seen him out in the last ten years. Oh, okay. Occasionally, you'll <laughs> run into him if you're in Nevada. Ah, okay. Um. This is verging a little bit more into the crafting side than the material side, but one thing I like to do with my sashes is so buttonholes along the sashes so that I can feed enchantment strips through them. And it makes it easy to just tear the enchantment strip off to tie it on when needed. Um, oh, yeah, that's interesting. I have not done it myself, but I've seen a lot of people doing the macrame sashes. Hmm. I don't know if anybody here has that skill, but those are pretty nice. I was at Clan one time, and they taught us to make macrame belts, and I still use that as my main belt, but I do not remember how, what hell I did to make it. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in the 70s. I just have to uh, restore my macrame skills, and I'm there. Sounds like a class in the making. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's, about, that's about all that's coming to mind for materials for me. Um, Anyone else have just general material comments? Um, Probably a material comment, but I've got a tool comment. Sure. And that is, besides, like, your sewing machine um, for crafting and, like, hammers for armor making, what is the one tool that you have bought that has been the most brilliant tool that you have ever bought and used? Uh, my sewing scissors comes to mind first. Um. Yeah. Sharp scissors are a must. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, managed, I managed I to get some heritage cutlery. My... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I managed to get some heritage cutlery knives before they stopped making them. And I picked up two pairs of them, and they're just great. <laughs> uh, I really love my, uh, Serger. Mm. I have not done a, a French seam in probably 15 years, because why would I? <laughs> Sometimes the material calls for it. For me, I think it was, I bought, I bought a pack of 42 sewing machine, uh, sewing machine feet for my machine. And it can help me do anything from an overcast stitch, which then I don't, I, my, in my tunic class, I showed everyone how to do 
a tunic without a serger and finish their seams. And there's an overcast foot in that pack that is just amazing. It has a rolling hem foot, a bias tape foot that helps you put on bias tape. I mean, it's having the right sewing machine foot for the job is always a big kicker for me. And it was only like 20 bucks. You know, I've always heard that and seen that. And I'm like, oh, I got to go do that. And I never do. And so I'm still always using the same foot and having to, yeah, work around it. So I should probably do that. I'm going to go post a link with the other links I've been posting in the general chat. So um, for me, I'm, I'm a lot more simple. Mine was a bodkin. I didn't really know what that was until Olana told me about it. And I was never able to get those inverted corners, like, poked out to actually be square until I got a bodkin. And and it's been awesome for, like, sashes and corners on tunics and everything. I use a screwdriver for that. <laughs> I, I have, because it's... You've heard of it. That's a really cool thing to learn about. Yes. Yeah. I did. I, I mean, I tried different things, but it, the it, I cut through the fabric, and the bodkin has a little round knob on it that mm -hmm. just pushes the fabric out and doesn't tear it. Nice. Maybe I'm too forceful. I don't know. It's yeah, I use possible. a screwdriver because it's a um, a flathead screwdriver has a right hand edge to it, and it's thick enough that I don't have a problem with it poking through. But sewing machine, or not sewing machine, knitting needles will definitely poke through the fabric, which that's what a lot of people use. Hmm. Yeah, the, um, I technically have a serger that uh, I kind of got talked into buying, but I haven't actually used it. Um, so one thing that uh, the Joannes near me used to have a Viking sewing gallery in the store, and I would go there pretty much every week uh, for hanging out and for lessons. And they were doing all sorts of demos and lessons on how to do different things. Um, unfortunately, eventually the Viking Sewing Gallery closed out of there. I think there's another one up San Rafael area, but that's over bridge, so I haven't hit it up. Um, if you have one near you, they're a great resource. Um, they taught me so many things about using my actual sewing machine, and I was starting to learn how to use the serger from them when they closed up shop near me. But uh, very helpful. Has anyone on here got a cry cut? What? Or cricket, or however you say it. The, the... Oh, cricket. Yeah. I was like, cry cut? And that, that's the name <laughs> of a baby alpaca and i was like what <laughs> that's a kriya yeah sorry kriya, yeah, okay <laughs> um i haven't gotten the cricket but i know lady armstrong uses one and i've seen hers and that's how she cuts her um like celtic knot work which is really cool and ben offered to get me one for christmas but i just said no i'm curious about them yeah, that, I'm kind of in the same boat. I've I've been wanting one for years, but can't quite justify the cost. One of us needs to get one so we can start experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can go in on it together, and you get a month, I get a month. I'm totally down with that. Um, that's how me and my dad <laughs> keep uh, buying kitchen gadgets. Actually, you know, it's not for me; it's for us. <laughs> right. So can can you describe what Cricut is for the rest of the people? Uh, it's a machine. They sell them at pretty much all the craft stores that uh, laser cuts thin materials. I think it can go up to thin leather, um, fabric, foam, you know, foam sheets, paper. Uh, I've seen it used mostly for like creative memory type stuff, but I also know it can do fabric. Yeah, so I see it. For decals, actually. Ah. Oh. Like on t shirts, like the words on t shirts or symbols on t shirts for mugs, things like that. I've seen a lot of people use it. 
Okay. I, I, I think I have... I n- Once you describe it, yes, I can envision it. I have seen it in the stores. I I have also seen... Thought, thought of woodworking uses for that. Um, if, it, if it can handle it. I think it can do the, the really thin wood stuff. Um... But and I'm I don't not... think it's a la- laser cutter. I think it's actually little cutting discs. Yeah, that mm. makes more sense, actually. You're right. Yeah, because I looked at the Glow Forge, but those start at, like, $3,000. But I want <laughs> one. Uh, other useful tools. Um, get some good weights to... Some like this. This is a shot, a bag of shot, and use it as a weight on your fabrics. Um, good it, pins is a good one too. For pinning for pinning things up. Yeah, get silk pins with a silicone top to them so that you can iron over them. It's really good. Huh, hadn't heard of that. Hmm. And a magnet to pick them all up with, or pick up pins that you've dropped with. Oh, yeah. I love my little magnet pin cushion. I, oh yeah, that thing's r- wonderful. Yeah, I, I have affixed strips of magnets onto my machine to make it easy to just toss things that way. Actually, a magnetic strip. Just uh, I have one that sits on the side of my. Um, crafting shelf unit because if I have to plastic dip anything metal it's really good for me to be able to set it on there on a non plastic dip part so that it doesn't move and I just put it on there to dry so anything like boning especially um, that's metal it works really well on that and then it also comes in handy for getting pins up off my floor That's cool. Oh, uh, to go back a little bit, I was looking up and to make my own trim, I used the uh, crochet cotton size 10 rather than like a yarn or something, which is how I was taught. But the crochet cotton tends to make it smoother and flatter and more easy to work with. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other odd questions or tools that are particularly useful. But I'm not really coming up with anything. Um, so I think we may be just uh, draw this to a close pretty soon here. Uh, any other final comments? No, I think without questions, we're, we covered enough. Yeah. yeah. I just want to thank you for doing this. I think um, having these online and these discussions, I my bookmarks are about five or six sites longer because of this. Yeah, and uh, I shared all the reference material I had on thank you. the chat. Yeah, I, I will copy and paste that uh, all the stuff from the chat into the Facebook discussion and probably also into the YouTube once I have it up. Um, um, I'm taking recommendations for what we what people want to talk about for uh, March and April. I don't think we'll get one in May before uh, coronation. Um, I would maybe suggest armor as a separate topic. Yeah, we we can get some dedicated armor people on here for that. And I'll I'll work on getting people if they can um, work on this venue for you. Okay, sounds good. All right, with that, uh, thank you for coming and talking. 
Thanks for having us. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.